welcome to this stateless code video. We'll be doing some setup here. And uh, in this video, we're going to be uninstalling the Salesforce DX command line version seven and installing the Salesforce CLI version two. Uh, this has been released for, uh, it's late 2023 right now. And it's been, um, SFDX has been deprecated and uh, the Salesforce CLI version two has been out for about six months now. So um, you've um, probably seen, if you haven't upgraded yet, the um, the command line uh, fussing at you to that you've got a bunch of deprecated stuff and to upgrade. So uh, in the previous Salesforce setup video, which is from a couple of years ago, uh, we did install the Salesforce DX command line uh, via that. I'll put the link to that older video in the show notes, um, but we're going to, uh, we installed it using N, um, NPM. So we're gonna use the the NPM uninstall version here. If you had installed via the Mac OS or Windows installers, uh, they have sections for that. If you had installed into a Linux distribution using tar files, um, it has information about that things that you need to know about the um, some troubleshooting and stuff like that. And then if you need to uh, return back to Salesforce DX uh, version seven. So we're gonna start here with the uninstalled command. Or actually we'll, we'll verify that we've got version seven of the CLI installed here. So DX dash dash version. And we do have 7.x installed here. So the next thing we're gonna do is uninstall the SFDX CLI. Takes a few seconds, uh, so 13 to be precise. And now we will install the Salesforce CLI. Before I do that, I'm going to set I'm using node 14 here. I'm gonna NVM use 18. Here. Uh, so I'm just switching uh, to a newer node version. Um, it's been a while since I've done JavaScript development on this computer. So um, we will now install to the newer version here. This will take longer than uninstalling most likely. Oh, it's going faster than I expected. All right, we'll deal with updating NPM to version 10 at a later time. Now I should be able to see that all of the, we'll go back here, all of the commands have been aliased. So if I do SF version, we now have the Salesforce CLI 2.x. And if we do uh, the SFDX version, now it'll show that it's aliasing to the Salesforce CLI. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to kind of parse out one of the old commands here um, that we had using SFDX, and we're going to convert it into a deploy command using the SF command line. I'm going to throw this into the 
Sublime so we can do some work on this. So um, before we had SFDX for source deploy, we'll create, uh, change this SF project deploy start. So that's the, the new Salesforce command for that. Um, we've got an alias here. Uh, instead of the dash U, it's now dash O. And then for all of these items here, um, you've got in the previous version, you had dash M once, and now you, uh, and then you comma separated your uh, metadata files. In, in the SF command line, you've got to um, essentially take the each one of those and um, they need their own dash M here. So if you're using dash X and uh, referring to a package dot XML, this is no change um, and, and you don't have to change how you're doing things, but uh, you can see here, um, continue going across these things. I'm going to now um, just do a replace here in the selected area. I guess, yeah. So, find comma. Place it with dash M. I'll just bring back the command of the Ashley with space dash M space or place all and then I'll return our command here. So we're through all of these dash M's, each one of the metadata items that was comma separated now um, is there. I had it in quotes. I didn't have any, uh, some Salesforce metadata types like layouts have um, spaces in them. Um, at least here, you only need to put quotes around the ones that have spaces in them rather than if you've got any in your list of things you're deploying, you would have had to put a space before. Uh, the next part of this is run specified tests. This remains unchanged, but before we had dash R's here, dash R and then a comma, comma separated list and this is going to be replaced with a dash T similar to um, the other things we had here. And we'll do the replace again. And this time with a dash T space. And then at the end, and I forgot, I neglected to um, copy this, but before you had dash W zero in our new command, you will use dash dash async to get a um, comp the, the comparable uh, item here. Uh, there, there's one more thing that if you're using a, especially a large org is going to save you uh, some trouble. And this is the dash dash ignore conflicts. Um, if you're confident that you don't have conflicts in your org or that your source code, like your, your repo is your source of truth and um, kind of forget what's in the org, 
in terms of authority, then you can do this. Otherwise, it's going to go a bit slower because you're going to do a um, a conflict check um, before doing it. We'll, we'll we'll do it with the conflict check first and um, see how long it takes with a fairly small um, code base here. So we'll try it. See if I entered and did all the replacement correctly. Project deploy start. Um, if you wanted to do uh, a validation, uh, it would be project deploy validate. Um, and that will do the, the, the equivalent of the dash C check only deploy uh, back with um, Salesforce DX. There are two separate commands in the kind of project deploy um, I guess namespace, that's probably not the right, um, or tree of commands. Um, but anyway, we'll try this out. See if, looks like it got us to where we want. Yeah, the code coverage error, we'll get a code co coverage error again here, because I deployed more stuff than um, than I have tests for but we can see that we've got that in place um, we're running on Pacific time here I'm on the eastern time zone so it's but that's um, pretty much how things go. Um, the Salesforce, um, the, the SF commands uh, do have a bit of a, a learning curve. So if we go in and find reference, you can see the SF commands here. Uh, when you're first um, dealing with um, so the Apex um, run test, for example, um, replaces the uh, SFDX uh, Apex um, colon test colon run command there. Uh, so you'll want to keep this uh, Salesforce CLI command line reference or command reference uh, handy when you're first uh, transitioning from SFDX over to SF. Um, I'll throw that command line reference and the um, the instructions on how to uh, migrate into the show notes for this video. Um, and then we'll probably start in the not probably early 2024 uh, with a, um, a series on Lightning Web Component testing using Jest. So that seems like a, um, generally Trailhead is very good in terms of um, learning content and stuff like that in the Salesforce ecosystem. But uh, Jest in particular is kind of one of the the, um, the weak points of Trailhead. So we're going to try to fill some of that um, market gap and um, help people upskill on testing their Lightning Web components. Um, feel be sure to like and follow uh, Stateless Code. We also do a lot of uh, work with Ruby and Ruby on Rails. Um, so spread the word and thanks for watching. Code along on an end-to-end -end journey through the creation, design, and development of a Ruby on Rails application for managing tabletop role-playing games. We start from Rails new and will guide you along the journey of the entire life cycle of the application. You'll get to see real life, real world problems and challenges as we try to deliver value for our users. Visit statelesscode.com to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Code video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. Check out our growing library of videos on our social media channels. Follow us at Stateless Code and Taxation is Theft.